Engine stock. I know you professor. Hey, Professor Vern, what's going on? And what is this? Good morning, Administrator. We're testing an atomic engine that Robot designed. So where would we use that kind of thing? Like on a Mark locomotive? Uh, Robot, what exactly did you design that to do? It will take me to Alpha Centauri. Ah, uh, sorry, Administrator. It looks like my research has gone off on a little tangent. Yeah, do you think? Anyway, Professor Vern, I'm here to talk about our Metro Subway interlocking replacement project. Absolutely, Administrator. Throughout 2020, Metro Subway will undergo a project to replace both the State Center and Charles Center interlockings. But Professor Vern, what exactly are interlockings and why are they so important? Interlockings are very important, Administrator, because they provide safe passage for trains from one track to another. They're also called crossovers and consist of railroad switches, railroad signals, third rail systems, rail heaters, railroad ties, and thousands of feet of cables. Do you happen to have a mock-up that lays all this out? Uh, actually, I was just getting to that. Uh, shall we check it out? Let's check it out. Okay. <music> Professor Vern, have you been playing with toys again? Uh, absolutely not, Administrator. Here we have a mock-up of State Center Interlocking and Charles Center Interlocking and State Center Passenger Station. Now, this is just an abbreviated version of a portion of our underground Metro subway. If it was built to scale, it would be 75 feet long and also have Lexington Market Station. Note that each interlocking has four track switches, four signals, and a crossover diamond track. Normally, trains move outbound towards Owings Mills on track two and inbound on track one. The train on track two is moving outbound toward Owings Mills and passes straight through Charles Center interlocking while the inbound train on track one passes straight through State Center interlocking. Now, both trains make their stop at State Center passenger station, then proceed straight. So normally the interlockings just pass the train straight through? That's correct. Normally, the four switches of the interlocking are all lined for straight moves. So tell me, why would we need to do anything differently? Sometimes we need to take a portion of trail or an entire interlocking out of service. In that case, we will route the trains that normally use that track onto the other track. In other words, we single track around the portion of the railway that's out of service. Okay, Professor Vern, show me an example of single tracking. Let's say we need to replace a section of rail on track two. Therefore, we will route outbound trains from track two over to track one. The operations control center will align the track switches for Charles Center interlocking to route the trains from track two over to track one. That's fine, but won't the outbound trains collide with the inbound trains coming in on track one? Administrator, railway operations are highly intricate maneuvers that are carefully coordinated. The inbound trains on track one will be stopped prior to state center interlocking until the outbound trains are safely guided back onto track two. Now, I'll align the track switches at both interlockings for single track operations on track one. Interlocking switches always work in pairs, so I'm aligning this pair at Charles Center interlocking to route trains from track two over to track one. I will align this pair at State Center interlocking to route trains from track one over to track two. Now I'll demonstrate how outbound trains will move. The train on track two moving outbound towards Owings Mills now diverts over to track one as it passes through Charles Center interlocking. Note the inbound train is stopped prior to State Center interlocking. The outbound train makes its stop at the passenger station then continues on track one then is diverted back onto track two as it passes through State Center interlocking. Now see the inbound train continue to make its stop at the passenger station. So this is how we single track around the construction activity. Excellent demo of single tracking. So why do we need to replace these interlocking? 
Administrator, after 37 years of service, the parts of the interlocking are near their end of life. Therefore, we're replacing them to maintain a state of good repair, just like in 2016 when we replaced Reisterstown Plaza interlocking. So tell me what will happen during the project. Administrator, to answer that question, I've invited Manager of Construction, Andrea Newmeyer to join us today. Hi, Andrea. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Andrea, thanks so much for joining us. Can you talk about the interlocking replacement project? Sure, Professor. During construction, we'll first start by replacing the interlocking at Charles Center, and then we'll move on to replace the interlocking at State Center. So how will we operate during all that construction? Metro will operate under single tracking for approximately 90 days while we complete the work. And how do we make sure the work is done safely? We will establish a boundary between the active construction site and the operating railway to ensure they're always separated by a safe distance. Andrea, Professor Verne, I want to thank you both so much for explaining how interlockings work. My pleasure. You're welcome. And sir, this is an amazing model. My son would love to come in and play with it. You know, I think we can make that happen. All aboard to Owings Mills. Whoop, whoop. Did you need something, Administrator? Uh, uh, no. Uh, we're good. Uh, carry on, sir. Robot. Whatever. Why am I even answering him? <laughs>